So at Flexo, we're working on ways for merchants, large and small, to accept cryptocurrencies without having to worry about the risk or volatility of those purchases. And what we're ultimately hoping to do is make payments as affordable as possible on both sides of the equation. Uh, we have a dream of making it possible one day for payments to be completely free. And we're looking to make any coin spendable using any app in any store. What a lot of people don't realize is that when you swipe a credit card, there are actually a lot of different parties that are involved in that purchase, sometimes six to even 12 different intermediaries that are taking a slice of the pie, but also opening up a new opportunity for fraud. And so what we try to do at Flexa is we disintermediate all of those middlemen and make it possible for buyers to reach their sellers more directly. We know that blockchain's promise is decentralization and um, making it possible for all these systems to be open and ultimately for no middlemen to be involved, but we do believe that there's some degree of centralization that's helpful. Um, that being said, ultimately we want to make these payments as affordable and open as possible, and so a lot of that comes with cleaning out all of the garbage that exists today. I think what I'm most excited about at Flexa is the opportunity for us to create payments that are actually uh, attainable by all kinds of people all across the world. So you think about how hard it is for someone, even in the United States, to get a credit card because they have to pass a credit check. And one of the great things about participating in blockchain cryptocurrencies is you don't have to pass a credit card check to hold the crypto. And in fact, you don't even have to work with any third parties if you want to hold crypto in your own wallet. So there's a lot of opportunity here for us to make, um, make finance and commerce a lot more accessible to lots more people. I just think there's a, a big onus and responsibility that a lot of us have when it comes to that. And so it really comes down to making sure that we're always working with and among the people who we're trying to serve in that regard and ensuring that we're actually solving their problems and not creating new ones. When it comes to creating a more inclusive economy at Flexa, we really do look at the types of people who can use our products. And with the proliferation of smartphones and data plans becoming more and more accessible all around the world, especially in the United States, we just look at a way of making it possible for people to participate in those ecosystems um, where they never have been able to before. So if you think about Venmo, you have to have a bank account. If you think about PayPal, you have to have a bank account or credit cards that back that wallet. And finally, we have a wallet that doesn't require those sorts of prerequisites. You just have to come with cryptocurrency. So while there's this burden of trying to make sure that we can make cryptocurrency accessible itself, I, I feel like those problems will shake themselves out eventually because it's such a natural fit for inclusive um, uh, initiatives and, and people who are underbanked or unbanked entirely. So a lot of the times we talk about social impact as though it's something that happens far away and it's something that we can um, invest in and contribute to but we don't actually experience ourselves and I think that's a little bit misguided because a lot of social impact opportunities can be found right at home. Um, I think as far as the blockchain being a tool for social impact, it really does come down to access. Um, we talked about in, in the conference, uh, we've talked a lot about how Blockchain as a force for good is only possible as long as there's made access to the blockchain. Um, so when it comes to people being able to tokenize community activities in ways that they've never done before, we have to build those vehicles. So um, at the end of the day, I don't think blockchain is necessarily a, a social impact activity today, but the real question is where can we take it? And there's just so much opportunity in the long term for blockchain to completely disrupt the existing governance, identity infrastructure, financial infrastructure, and, and I think that's been a highlight of the conference so far. One of the questions that has also come up a lot is, can we build this from the ground up, or do we have to partner with existing institutions? Do we have to comply with existing regulation? And it's a delicate balance for sure, but uh, we've taken the stance that you really do have to partner and you have to work within the existing infrastructure to make baby steps in the right direction. And uh, like I said earlier, we have this dream of eventually connecting any app to any store using any coin. But we're not going to be able to do that right off the bat. We're not going to make a world in which merchants can accept Bitcoin or Ether natively from day one. We have to start with fiat. We have to start with banking licenses. We have to start with all of the existing um, onus, I suppose, in order to build a better world, and I think that's something that often gets overlooked, but it's something we're very focused on.